Hello, I'm John Spinks, and this is a very important message I'm addressing to the leaders of a large number of religious groups, including the Jehovah's Witnesses, the Plymouth Brethren Christian Church, the Mormons, and the Church of Scientology, just to name four, and it applies, as you will see, to many thousands of religious groups across the world. I've been watching the four groups I've just named and a whole variety of other similar religious groups for quite a few years now via a campaign called Cultescape. And I've been speaking over the last few years to members of these churches or religions and also those who used to be members of these churches or religions. I've been in two such groups myself. The first one was the Exclusive Brethren, which I was born into, which later rebranded as the Plymouth Brethren Christian Church. They had very strict laws that cloned our identities and by the time I left, over 70% had been separated from family members because their laws did not allow normal contact with non-members. This meant that children were separated from their mothers, husbands from their wives, grandparents from their grandchildren, often for life. So upon watching their behaviours and seeing the fruit of the doctrines of these uh, religious groups, it became apparent that they've all been behaving in a similar way, of which I shall list some of these similarities and characteristics now before coming to the main message that I have for the leaders of these groups. Here are just nine of my observations and what I have heard consistently from those in the groups and those who have left the groups. As the leader of these groups, therefore, see how many you can relate to. Number one, in effect, your members are told that you are the only right religious group to be in, despite there being over 40,000 religious denominations across the world. Number two, despite this fact, your followers all believe that you, are, you, the leader or leadership, are always right and that they are not allowed to question or criticise you and if they did, they could face punishment. Number three, you are ultimate, the ultimate authority of your group. What you say is law. Number four, you all give your followers rules and laws, sometimes in great detail, how they should think, act and feel, what clothing, hairstyles, often where they can't live, who they can't marry, where they can't go and what they can't do. Many restrictions, prohibitions and stipulations and if they disobey you they know they will be punished by you and the group. Number five, your group has a polarised us versus them mentality. Number six, your members are generally encouraged to or required to live and or socialise only with other members of your group. Number seven, your members are expected to devote inordinate amounts of time to the group and group related activities. Another one I was in, we had to go to 11 meetings a week. Number eight, as far as you and your particular group is concerned, you would say that there is no legitimate reason to leave. And number nine, lastly, and let's be honest and open about this. The amount of control you exercise over your members is so great that if anyone leaves your group, the members who remain, in effect, will emotionally, physically or both, cut those loved ones out of their life. Children, mothers, fathers, husbands, wives, grandparents and those once loving family relationships will be severed, which you will agree destroys the family unit. This happened to me with my grandparents when I was four. All four left the exclusive brethren and they were severed out of our life, never to be seen again. When I was 22 and I left my family, and I left, my family were influenced to cut off all contact with me. And to this day, 32 years now, they haven't been around to see me. Of course, I'm not complaining, I'm campaigning. But this isn't about my experiences in these religious groups. I speak on behalf of all the destroyed families over the decades, thousands upon thousands of children, mothers, fathers, husbands and wives, split, separated and lacerated physically and emotionally, often for life, which leads me to my message to you, the leaders of all such groups that practice these characteristics that I have mentioned above. Stop it. Stop harming children, mothers, fathers, husbands, wives, grandparents by influencing them to emotionally or physically distance themselves from their loved ones who have decided they don't want to follow you anymore. They don't have to follow you. Many don't like having the heavy loads and burdens of your laws that you put on their shoulders. Many of you acknowledge Jesus, who only ever loved unconditionally and who prayed that we all may be as one, yet you do the opposite. 
your love is okay is conditional and it and with this you kill steal and destroy and lacerate families look at how many families no longer are a family unit because of the laws you have put them under so leaders of all these groups that have a legacy of destroyed families here's what you can choose to do change to love you have nothing to fear because there is no fear in love let's let love override and replace your agendas your policies your doctrines your laws rules regulations and your burdens on your members shoulders let love replace your pride your self-righteousness and your ego do it for the children who long to see their parents again the mothers and fathers who so want to have their family back again the grandparents who are missing their dear grandchildren watching them grow up do it for the marriages that have been severed by your laws replace it all with love unconditional love and watch the joy unfold and take over and let love be what you are known for not family destruction pain heartache separation harsh callous law and coercive control but mercy and kindness and love if you'd like to chat more about it get in touch with me thank you for watching if you agree that these groups would all benefit by changing from their laws to love please leave your comments below plus any other suggestions you have which might help these groups and if you are enjoying these videos please subscribe and help get these awareness campaign messages out further and just before you go see that painting there which i painted a few years ago i'll get it down so you can have a look at it it's called unconditional love and especially if you're a church leader one of the leaders i've been talking about have a look at it take a close look you might see something that is there for you thank you for watching